In this exercise, you are going to choose a color scheme that has three plus colors. A couple examples that are really simple are red, yellow, blue. Those are the primary colors. A secondary color scheme includes green, orange, and purple. But you can choose any three or more um, color, color combination that appeals to you. And we're going to use Photoshop to create a pattern. So here's how it's going to work. First thing you're going to do is draw an 8 by 8 square on a piece of paper. Precision is going to be helpful, so the more precise you are now, the easier this will be when you move on to later steps. You're going to draw your design within the square using pencil. Do not draw over the edge of the paper, so you're going to draw right up to the edge, but not, not touching the edge of the square. I like to draw shadows, so this is what I chose to draw. But of course you can draw whatever you want. Look how my drawing does not go up to the edge of the square. Just kind of stops a little short of that. Um, at this point you can add color, you can draw with marker, watercolor, gouache, pen, colored ink, whatever appeals to you at this point. add value. I, I just added a little bit of value to my piece. I chose to do most of my coloring within Photoshop. So you can hold off and do that as well. So then I turned the paper over and I drew four, perf four inch squares, perfect four inch squares on the back, and then I cut along the center lines there. Then I rearranged, I flipped the one and the three with the two and the four, and then I rearranged them again. So this is the final arrangement that you need, and then you tape them together. Then you flip the paper back over, and your job is to fill in, connect these lines here, make some sort of um, bridge. This is the bridge that I made. This is just an example. I've seen people um, do various different patterns. I think probably you might choose something a little more simple than this. It might read a little bit better on a larger scale. So my pattern's a little bit more complex than what I would recommend. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna do is scan it into the computer or you can use your phone to take a good photo of it. And then um, you're going to open it in Photoshop and you want to create an eight by an eight by eight inch um, square. And you want the DPI dots per inch to be pretty high, um, 300 if you're gonna print on paper or if you have any intention of sending this to be printed through Spoonflower, uh, 150 is the resolution you want. Um, you can't bring the image resolution up if it is already small, so avoid reducing the size of your piece um, because you can't reverse that. Okay, so clean up any areas that are messy using the brush tool. At this, this is the point where I really changed my image using Photoshop. I cleaned everything up and I was able to change the colors and just make everything look pretty pretty nice at this point. Then go to choose filter, other offset, and follow these um, horizontal, horizontal and vertical. Um, divide your pixel dimensions in half and place here. So I divided 576 into into half and then put those um, pixel numbers here, click wrap around and see what happens. You'll see that the, the Photoshop creates a new edge for you and you want to start to clean up that edge. Okay, now you're going to define the pattern and so, so this is what I had after I had um, offset the image and then I cleaned up all my edges. And then I added a bunch of color. I noticed that the color got a little bit um, 
less saturated once I use this as a pattern. But this is pretty interesting for now. Um, again, I think this is a little bit more complex than what you really want to go for. You probably want to choose something that's a little bit easier to read when it is reduced in size. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Um, and there are step-by-step -step instructions here for how to create a pattern out of that image. I created a little video for you so you can see how this works. I'm going to play this. So you go up to edit, you're going to define your pattern and name it something. And then it will go into your stash of patterns. Okay, then you're going to create a new file. And I just chose 8.5 by 11 with a vertical orientation um, as if I were going to print it on some computer paper. And I moved the resolution up, but if you wanted to print the, a nice print, you'd probably want to go up to 300 dpi. Now I'm drawing a rectangle, and I'm going to show you how to fill it. This is the stroke. I turned the stroke off and then I'm going to fill it with my pattern and I'm gonna to have to reduce the scale a little bit for the pattern to show up. So that's pretty interesting. Um, now you can probably see why I would recommend using a less complex pattern because as you reduce it in size, it becomes harder and harder to see the details. Okay, and so there's my final pattern. You can sort of see some of the edges where it jumps. Um, it's kind of strange. It kind of reminds me of like a hotel um, carpet or something like that. But see what you can come up with and um, let me know if you have any questions.